for classy people of America. Just kidding, guys. It's sparkling cider. Let's just jump right into this video. I have a pretty cool pet. And we do. everything that you generally need to know about having one. So, this is Jude. Jude is a ferret. He's the best thing that's ever happened in the whole entire universe. He's my little chill boy. They're super flexible. But it's the best pet in my opinion for people that don't really have a lot of space or a lot of really time to deal with a pet. There's a couple things that people should really know about having ferrets though. Yes, they are very cute, they are very cuddly, but all ferrets have different personalities. Uh, when we first got Jude, he was really playful as a baby and he is deaf and he is part albino, which means that his eyes are a little redder than normal, so if you catch it, that's why. Um, and he is partially blind because of that albinism that runs in ferrets. Uh, his coat is lighter than um, a lot of other ferrets and <laughs> um, so that's one thing to really focus on is that Jude is deaf so he is a little bit harder to train. That doesn't mean that you can't train them though. Uh, he was really actually super easy to train. We did litter box train him. Uh, he can do a little bit of uh, tricks, but that's all that we've got right now. And he did just wake up from a nap, so don't mind him. He'll get a little bit more playful soon. Right? Yeah. Uh, he does have a brother. His brother's name is Doc. Uh, he is not an albino. He is brown and you'll see him a little bit later into the video but let's just get into yeah let me get my little notebook my handy dandy notebook of some pros about having a ferret instead of something different like a dog or a cat Uh, pro number one, they are very playful. They do hop, skip, jump around. You do hear them laugh when they're super excited. So that's really cute to see. But they do sleep a lot. They sleep about 18 hours of the day. It means that they are asleep for most of the day. So if you really do have an extenuating uh, job circumstances where you can't be home all the time or for a long period of time, this would be the perfect pet for you. They do wake up in the early morning and they also wake up during like dawn. So dusk and dawn is typically when they are awake, which is great. He's shaking my camera, sorry. Which is great for someone that doesn't really have a lot of time throughout the day to play with them because they're normally sleeping throughout that time anyway. Pro tip, try not to put their cage in your room because they will rustle at night, uh, drink water and things like that. Um, and if you're a super light sleeper, then that could be kind of annoying for you. Uh, but for us, it's right in our room and it doesn't really bother us too much. So it's not that bad. You can train them when they are babies. They do get a little nippy like a puppy. You can train them not to bite you. Uh, if you want to see in depth how we did train him to not bite, comment down below and we'll make that happen. But this is a technique called scruffing. And I know you didn't do anything wrong, but this is how this is how you get them to calm down. It's not hurting them in any way. It actually puts them in a relaxed state to where they know that they've done something wrong, but it doesn't hurt them in any way. It is also what their mother does. They are very small animals. 
So, Jude is about six months old. So he's not full grown yet, but he is a big boy. Um, he is very, he's a very good size for a ferret um, to be about six months old. He's not too chubby, even though he's a little chubbier than his brother, but, but he's a good size. He will only get maybe a couple inches bigger than this, maybe this, but they don't really grow to be that big of an animal, which is really great for people that have apartments and have smaller houses. My fiance has very high anxiety, so this is a good animal to have around. They're not the cuddliest things. Like they won't sit and like cuddle with you or come and like lay by you majority of the time. They just kind of want to go, go, go. Like this is about the calmest as they'll get, which isn't really calm at all. Um, <laughs> but he does have very high anxiety levels and Jude tends to calm him down a lot. Both Jude and Doc tend to calm him down a lot. Their whole mannerisms, their nature and everything like that, which is just kind of like a plus for us. Um, Cause if I'm being completely honest, he does help me too in that department. Um, because they're not super loud animals and they're not anything to really, <laughs> they're not anything to really be um, loud. They are trainable animals. Uh, they are naturally very clean animals. They do poop in corners. So anywhere that is a corner is a potential bathroom for them because they like to back up to things, which means that you can litter box train them. It was very easy for us to litter box train Jude. Doc is still getting there, but he is younger than Jude by a couple, by a month, I think. Jude is about six months and Doc is about five-ish months. So he's the baby of the family. They're very treat oriented. So you find a treat that they like and they'll be your best friend. Some ferrets don't even really like treats, but like ours, ours don't really like treats, but they do like something called ferritone, which is a type of supplement for their skin and their coat, which makes them like shinier, thicker, just overall looks more healthy, gets them more healthy, gives them uh, daily vitamins and things like that. So if you wanted to know exactly the information where I get mine, it'll be in the description box below. Another pro. To me, it is like having the best part of a dog and a best part of a cat kind of mushed into one. Like they always wanna play with you, they always wanna, you know, be free, but they're not super needy like cats like cats kind of just do their own thing and things like that that's like a ferret like ferrets will just do their own thing explore they're very curious animals if they can get into it they will get into it also you're gonna have to baby proof your house semi in the sense that if their head can fit through it their whole body can fit through it so underneath doors or small little holes they can get through all of that so you got to be very careful on if you don't want them running around your house and things like that make sure that you get a good cage a quality cage and just check it to see if you have any small spaces that they might get stuck in or anything like that the last pro that I have is kind of a big one for me but they are very lovable creatures not in the sense that they'll come and like lay with you or anything like that but they will come up to you and try to get your attention, try to get you to play with them. And it is very sweet. And sometimes they can be very sweet animals with just like licking you when they first get up and things like that. But they are very good pets to have. If you train them well enough, they're great for a family pet too. Uh, you just gotta train them not to be as nippy and things like that. But we have small kids running around all the time and we've never had an incident of anything but we do train them really well cons the biggest con that you hear a lot of people say about ferrets is that they stink which when we were first thinking about getting one it was a really really big issue for my fiance because he didn't want the house to smell or stink or anything like that 
but when we got them, they didn't really have that bad of a smell. It, you get them from a pet shop or like a pet dealer or depends on really where you get them. Um, they might come deglanded and desexed, but that really depends on where you get them from. We got ours from Petco and walking around the store uh, to get actually turtle stuff for our turtle. And I saw them and I completely fell in love with Jude. And my fiance was talking to me. He was like, if you really want one, we're not just going to get one on a whim. You have to do your research. You have to find out a lot of information about them. And I did. And for that whole week, we researched about ferret and ferret care and everything like that. And found out that it wasn't that bad of a process. The initial start is a little bit pricier when it comes to starting your ferret home, I guess. Because uh, for one thing, a ferret, a ferret alone costs about $200 depending on where you're from. And then that's not even counting their cage, their food, their uh, toys and things like that. So you gotta factor in like if you can like afford a ferret. Once you get past that initial shock of getting all their stuff, it's really not that expensive. You just gotta get the food, the goodbye odor, and the ferret tone. Um, and we'll get into what goodbye odor is soon. But it's around $500 to start off with one ferret and getting their cage and everything like that. So it is a little pricey in the beginning, but it does get better. It, goodbye odor supplement is a product sold by Marshalls, I believe, and it is something that you put in their water and in their food to, even though they come deglanded, they take out their back glands where most of the scent comes from, but they forget to take out these little like glands in the front that where the majority of their smell is coming from now does come from those glands so that kind of stops that from happening as much so it does decrease their smell by a lot like when we first got them and put them on there it was completely different from when we first got them at the pet store it was completely different so it does help to get it if you're worried about the smell it's not too bad they kind of smell like puppy all the time but not even really when I'm holding them and I have to go somewhere like work or something does their smell really get on me like nobody's like oh my god like you smell like puppy it's not that strong of an odor to be that worried about another con would be their vet bills since they are considered an exotic animal they will have exotic vet bills you have to get them vaccinated for rabies and a vaccination for distemper just to keep everything legal and registered and things like that you do get those both once a year i believe but that's really the only shots that you have to have and have to be documented for another con is that they can get human diseases and they can get dog diseases which means that if you have the flu or the cold or something like that they can get that so if you're sick you have to leave them alone the minimum that you can do is you know let them out in like a clean sterile area and just let them do their thing there you can't be like hugging up on them and things like that because that'll get them sick and you're gonna have to take them to the vet and it'll be this whole big thing and nobody wants to deal with a sick there because it can go from completely fine to in a span of like 30 minutes be like i need to go to the, like the emergency room it's so quick they can take a turn so fast so you just want to keep them really healthy and you know if you're sick or if you have other pets that are sick they're it's contagious to them. Another annoyance more than anything is that their toys are more expensive than normal toys since they're considered exotic animals. Um, personally, I just get them cat toys because they love the jingle of it, they love the colors of them, the scratchy feeling. So they'll do just fine with cat toys if you didn't want to spend the extra like two or three dollars for ferret made toys. But they're basically the same thing. It's not anything different. They do need a minimum of four hours out of the cage playtime. Like playing with either you or just exploring around the room that's designated for them or your room. 
but they need that. They need that stimulation. They need that playtime to bond to you and things like that. If I'm like running late for like work or something like that, I will have them just be out while I'm doing my makeup because that's enough for them. I take like an hour, 30 minutes to do my makeup anyways. So it's not that big of a deal for them to like wait out of the cage. Bathing them is something that is a little controversial in the whole ferret world. I personally think that it is okay to bathe your ferret about once or twice a month. I only bathe them about once a month. Or if they're smelling like really bad, then I'll bathe them that extra t like extra second time. But if you think that bathe if you think that bathing them more frequently is going to cut down on their smell, it actually makes it work. It makes the glands in their skin produce more of that oil to moisturize their skin. And it just, that's where the smell is coming from, is that like oil that they secrete to, from their skin. And if you bathe them more than that anyways, their skin gets really dry and itchy and it's really uncomfortable. It's like using head and shoulders, like every day, you, you get like very stripped skin on your scalp and it's very uncomfortable and you're just itching all over the place and it's not helpful whatsoever so only bathe your ferrets once or twice a month like max and you can use ferret shampoo they do sell it at local pet stores but i just use johnson and johnson baby formula it's not gonna hurt them our vet said that it was fine to do so you can use baby soap on them like the no tears formula like that's fine for them because you'll do it so not frequently that it's it's fine it's just to cleanse them okay this is doc this is our little baby boy you can see that he is a little bit smaller than jude is whoop they're very flexible if i didn't say that before but like i was saying he is a little bit smaller than jude is there is a story behind that um with the whole pet store debacle but if you want to see another video about me going in depth about that experience comment down below <laughs> and i will definitely make that video but every ferret is different they have different personalities make sure that you can hold them when you're thinking about getting one make sure that you play with them for a little bit see how they interact if it's if they're super bitey in the beginning when they're babies they're probably going to be super bitey as adults and it's going to be a little bit harder for you to train them if they're like that too. What are they doing? Doc is our playful. He's very, very playful. I will... He's much sweeter and more affectionate than Jude is to an extent to where like he will come up to me and like just lay down for like a minute or two and then off to his next adventure but he does come and he does you know snuggle for me, me for a little bit of time but it's not too to that extent or he'll give me kisses if he's really feeling like generous but that's about it but you see how he's much darker now Jude is deaf and Doc is not so I'm really grateful that they play so well together also uh, some ferrets don't really like being around other ferrets, so it's kind of hard for you to introduce one another to each other. He's looking at me, he's like, get me down. I don't want to be up here, mom. But yeah, they, they were introduced very well with each other, and if you want a video about how to introduce two ferrets to each other, uh, comment down below. And I will definitely try to make one for you because it's it's fairly easy um, it was easy for us Jude was very nurturing towards him so it was very sweet to see them interact with each other but like I said if you want a video of that you can just comment down below mm -hmm. 
Um, as for the cage, I'll insert some clips of their cage and a full description of what type of cage we did get them. Uh, I can't really remember what brand it is. I think it's like Katie or something like that. Uh, but it's a pretty good one. It has levels. It has a couple different levels for them to use. And having a level cage is super important for them. <laughs> Uh, it mentally stimulates them. You do have to move the levels around a little bit, like every time that you deep clean their cage, just to keep them like engaged and be like, oh my god, this is a whole new cage, when it's really not. It's just moved around. Some other things that I know that my ferrets really like are those like jingly balls, because they're really colorful for one for Jude and they do make a lot of noise for Doc and we just kind of tie them onto strings and play with them like that. I will put some clips of that in the video. In the end of the video. But that is all that I can, oh, food, food. They have a really high protein diet, which means that they don't, which means that they don't really eat fruit or vegetables or things like that. They do eat a lot of like rabbit, turkey, chicken, beef, because they are carnivores. So you do have to keep a lot of water in their cage. Make sure that they're always full of water because if you're on such a high protein diet you're thirsty a lot of the time and if you get dehydrated that is not good for them it can create diarrhea it can make them throw up it's a lot of bad stuff that can be prevented by such an easy thing to do is just give them water it's really really easy oh look at that they're litter pans their litter pans are full of pellets right now. The little litter pellets that you can use for like cats. You don't want to get them the cat litter, like the kitty litter, like the dusty stuff, because that can go into their lungs and give them a respiratory infection and that's not good for them whatsoever. You're gonna have to take them to the hospital um, or the vet, <laughs> not the hospital, the vet. Um, so we just put them the little like paper pellets in their, their litter box. And for bedding, we don't get scented stuff, like for like gerbils or like rabbits or anything like that. You have to get non-scented paper bedding. Ours is purple and white. And I will list it in the description box below what litter pan, what pellet brand, and what bedding brand we use. But it doesn't have any scent to it. It is dust free or tries to be dust free. Uh, because also that dust and stuff and debris will give them a respiratory infection. Uh, but as for like bedding and litter, that's really all that we use for them. All that to say that ferrets are really good pets to have. They're great family pets. I love my two boys. I do plan on getting more. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom like comment I want to hear what you guys think I want to hear what you guys want to see so you know where to do that at and if you want to follow me on any other social medias they will be linked in my description box below have a good day guys